On this week's episode of Motivational Minutes, MSNBC's Daniela Pierre Bravo explains why it's important for people of color to embrace their unique contributions and show up in the workplace as their most authentic selves. There was an example you give in the book of like the woman of color who I think she was at like a company function and, you know, the men are all talking about their eccentricities, their, their, their travel to these gorgeous exotic places and or you know, whatever homes they own. And, you know, and she's sort of like not knowing how to even engage in that conversation for fear of being quickly othered. I mean, she's already visibly othered, right? But now she's even afraid to even communicate socially. So what I got from that was that should fall now on the other people to be more conscious of that. Oh, Oh, right? I mean, I could it's write like, a whole nother book about the problems on the other <laughs> side and the role right. and the responsibilities <laughs> of institutions and corporations to walk the walk on inclusion, belonging, um, and diversity. Right. That's a whole nother book. Yeah. And I can't tell you how many like extra pages I had that were honed in on that, but I had to make a decision. And my decision was to focus in on the part that we can control as women of color, because there are great books out there that talk about all of the problems that we encounter and how, you know, unfair it is, which it is. But this book, I really wanted it to be about the small ways that we can control the equation. Um, and you know, it's unfortunate because the, the black woman that you, you were talking about in, in this instance, like, that's what I mean about, reckoning with our own sense of otherness because yes, there's an other part that we can't control, which is how other people exclude us, maybe even consciously or unconsciously, right? Because, you know, people like to, to socialize and be with people that they feel comfortable with, which, you know, if you're in a, in a group work setting, that's just not very good, you know, leadership and management if you're like, right. But that's, that's another part of the equation. But the problem is, is that these sense of alienations that happen in the workplace happen in nuanced ways, like in a social setting, right? But you Mm -hmm. and I know that those social settings and our alienation from those settings has repercussions. It's like, you know, a a social conversation between white men then might, you know, um, develop into like, oh, hey, by the way, there's this open position. Like, what do you think of it? And this is where like promotions and different opportunities and, um, you know, things that get discussed that women are, you know, outside of that conversation. So when we realize that, like, for example, in this situation of this woman, when we realize that our experiences are just as valuable. And even if we didn't go, you know, a weekend in the Hamptons or, you know, skiing in Aspen, like we are providing, like we have to embrace like our own experience. Yeah. I was, you know, back Mm -hmm. home and my childhood home and with my parents, my, you know, my family struggling with a health condition. I was there, you know, helping them out, but like, we're huge. Right. Like share your authentic self self. in that moment. Yeah. 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 That's so true because, you know, uh, in that instance, um, you were also, I mean, there's so many great stories in the book, so I don't want to give it all away, but there was another little quick thing and I'll just call it, well, I won't give it the story away, but I'll just call it the China doll incident Ooh, yeah. <laughs> in the book, which is like when something like that happens as well, people, they actually think they're being complimentary too. Like, and, and when they say certain things, so, you know, there's a, there's a balance of, there's a combination of ignorance, um, inappropriateness, but all the things that on the corporate side, you're right. They're definitely, I, I used to think that sensitivity training was a little bit hokey. Like you have to teach people not to be like, old, you know, but um, yeah, people think they're actually complimenting you or sharing their Hamptons weekend with you. And they're completely isolating yeah. you without realizing instead. Yeah. Is, well, in this instance, you know, this it, was a little bit harder to, to kind of, for the for the for the Asian woman who had this kind of microaggression towards her, it was harder for her to digest because this came from a mentor. This came from somebody right. who, you know, at certain points advocated for her. And but she was so uncomfortable with that, you know, um with that comment because 
And mm. then it had real repercussions because anytime she was in a meeting, because she worked in a creative field, and anytime she was in a meeting, um, she needed to like bounce off ideas and be creative. Like it felt like, like it felt like she couldn't. And like, there's no way to articulate other than to say like she didn't feel fit in. She didn't feel like what she had to offer was as good as her white counterparts because that right, comment right. confirmed to her that she was different and different in her life had shown her that it was bad. Different is bad. And so mm. that's what I mean about like the origin of the other because different isn't bad. And like going back and like realizing why have we defined it that way is so important because we can rewrite it. Subscribe today for more inspiration on the go.